Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, I'm going to do a tire rotation on my two door Badlands Bronco. Uh, why do we rotate our tires? Uh, basically, we want to maximize the tread life, uh, get the most mileage we can out of the tires, uh, prevent any unnecessary weird wear patterns from occurring. Uh, the Bronco, as well as other off road sport utility vehicles, usually come with a full size spare. To me it makes sense to rotate that fifth tire into the mix as you're effectively getting 20% more uh, mileage out of your rubber. Why would you not want to rotate your fifth wheel into the mix? Well, maybe when these tires wear out you want to buy an identical set. So you want to keep your spare and only purchase four tires instead of five. Um, however, with your tire at the back of the truck expose the elements over the over time it's gonna break down from uv exposure and exposure to the elements uh, when it comes time the when maybe you need to use your spare it might not be in a serviceable shape i'm doing this procedure on my bronco but any 4x4 off-road vehicle with a full-size spare uh, the procedure be pretty much identical so stick around enjoy the video and let me know what you think thanks First thing we want to grab is a lug nut security key. You'll also need a half inch drive breaker bar, a basic torque wrench, a six sided 19 millimeter socket, and of course your lug nut key. Before beginning any work on the truck, set the parking brake. It's also a good practice to chalk the front wheel as well. Under the trunk storage cover, you'll find the scissor jack kit and the tire iron. I decided to use a factory jack for this job just so I can familiarize myself with its function. You don't want to be broken down at the side of the highway at night and in the rain and not know how to use the jack. Bronco comes with this jack extension that gives the jack a few centimeters of extra height. The actual jack itself is a winding scissor style unit. Have a look at this graphic which illustrates how a 5 wheel rotation is done. The spare comes off and replaces the left rear, which in turn then replaces the left front. The left front goes in the right rear position and the right rear replaces the right front. The right front is then mounted on the spare. Got it? Good. Start with removing the spare. Two regular lug nuts and a keyed lug nut. It turned out my top two lug nuts weren't very tight at all. The bottom lug is the one that compresses the tire up against the bump stops. Once you have it backed out, remove the remaining top two. The spare is now ready to be removed. Take care to pull it free past the camera stock before dropping it down. Taking a look at the jack kit, you'll find an iron and two drive extensions as well as a T-bar drive. Assemble the extensions together and add the T-drive to the end. The extensions as well as the T-drive holder use a ball and spring type holding mechanism. The 
The manual states that the jack extension is used for lifting the front of the vehicle. However, I tested it out the back and I don't see any issue with using it. It'll save you a bit of cranking. Position the jack directly under the drive axle and next to the lower control arm mount. Once you have the jack in place, add the tire iron to the drive extension to use it as a hand crank. A scissor jack utilizes excellent leverage and lifting the two ton plus Bronco is easily achieved. Once the tire is free of the ground, we can begin by removing the lug nuts. I prefer to loosen them in stages and in a crisscross pattern, the same as tightening them. While we're not talking cylinder heads or case cover torquing here, it's always a good practice. A quality six-sided socket is imperative, as Ford likes to use two-piece chrome tin covered bolts for their lug nuts, which you can easily ruin if you're not careful. Once all the hardware is broken loose, follow up by removing the lugs completely, followed by the wheel. Grab the spare tire you previously removed and position it in place. Start a single lug nut to keep the wheel from tipping off the studs. As with loosening, hand tighten the six lug nuts in a crisscross pattern just snug enough to seat the wheel. Using your torque wrench, again in a crisscross pattern, tighten each lug nut to 136 newton meters or 100 foot pounds. I switched to a 19 millimeter deep socket on my dollar store torque wrench to gain a little extra knuckle clearance. When using the torque wrench, apply torque in a smooth, steady fashion, not jerking or yanking on the tool. From the tire that you removed, pop out the center cap and transfer it to the last wheel you installed. It's now safe to crank down the jack, transfer the wheel chalk to the opposite side and continue to the driver's side front wheel. Same as before, break the lug nuts free, but don't loosen them completely, particularly on the front wheels as they don't benefit from the parking brake holding them stationary. Position the scissor jack with the extension directly under the arrow stamped on the side of the frame.
The jack extension is 100% necessary on the front of the vehicle as you're lifting by the frame and not the suspension as you are in the rear. Because of this, your suspension is going to droop and the added height of the extension will prevent you overextending the jack. With the weight of the truck off the wheel, it is now safe to remove the hardware. Pull the wheel free and take the opportunity to inspect the corner assembly. Look for uneven rotor wear, signs of damage due to off-roading, and go over the lines and wiring to make sure they're not damaged or free from their fixing points. So now your driver's rear tire you last removed becomes your driver's front. Line up the stud holes in the wheel and heave it up into place. So now that the driver's rear tire you last removed becomes your driver's front. Line up the stud holes in the wheel and heave it up into place. As before, start a lug to keep it from tipping off and finally add the rest of the lugs and snug them into place. As I mentioned previously, the front wheel will spin while up in the air. So lower the truck down enough until the tire contacts the ground and you can apply final torque to the lugs. Again for the Bronco, this is 100 pound feet. For the passenger side rear, I decided to go without the extension, seeing as the jack was already three quarters wound out. Even still however, the scissor jack gets precariously close to topping out once the wheel clears the ground. If you're running anything bigger than the Sasquatch 35s, you will definitely want to use the extension for jacking. By now the procedure should be second nature. This is my Bronco's second tire rotation and even though it's already spent the winter on Ontario roads, I haven't yet had any issues with the aluminum rims corroding themselves at the iron rotors. Yet. On my next rotation, I think I'll be looking to add zinc or copper anti-seize to the back side of the wheels to prevent corrosion. Pull the wheel free and pop out that center cap. A lot has been said about these Goodyear tires and their ability to pick up more gravel than a shovel. Just have a look at this one. You definitely don't want to be tailgating any Broncos. This rotation came right after my last trip up north, hence the dirty sidewalls and gravel. However, it's been a couple of weeks since and a lot of these rocks are still embedded in the tread. Once again, line up the wheel and heave it up into place and start your lug nuts. Again, start the lug nuts hand tight, crisscross fashion before proceeding with torquing them down.
Wind down the jack and slide her out. We're almost finished now. Retract the opposite wheel and break loose the lug nuts. I think for me, the main reason for leaving the jacket extension in place is just to save yourself the hassle of constantly adding and removing it. Line the jack up under the arrow as you did on the other side, insert the prop rod and start cranking. Once clear of the ground, remove the lug nuts, followed by the wheel. Line up your last removed wheel and lift it into place. As before, start your lugs and snug the wheel up until it's seated. Again, drop some weight down onto the wheel and proceed with final torquing. It may look like I'm really leaning on that torque wrench, but it has a much shorter handle than the breaker bar, therefore requires more effort to reach torque. Lower the vehicle back down to the ground and all that's left to do is to remount the spare. I check my spare tire bump stops and make sure they're not permanently squished or damaged. Also take a look at the wiring grommet to make sure it's secured in place. Placing the spare back onto the tailgate is a bit of a clumsy operation. I leverage it up onto the rear bumper to give me a bit of a rest. Grabbing the sides and trying to aim it over the camera stock is done blindly. When you're doing it solo, try to be careful. As I watch my video now, it turns out I really leaned onto my camera stock. It looks like Ford engineers foresaw the situation and made the camera parts surprisingly robust.
thread on the three lug nuts for your spare. The bottom one drives the wheel into the bump stops. Remember the torque spec on these are 56 newton meters or 41 pound feet. Don't forget to remove your security lug key. While I was plugging away with this tire rotation in the driveway, the mailman swung by with a package for me. My friend Dino recently opened up a merch portal on Etsy, so I wasted no time in ordering me up one of his beautiful tees. I spent a minute trying to recall how the jack went back into its hold. It'll only go one way. So that's basically a, a five wheel tire rotation job done. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, again, doing five wheels instead of four, you're not juggling two wheels off the vehicle at a time. With five wheels, you're just removing one wheel and shifting it around. Uh, you also wanna maybe rotate them a little more frequently than you would otherwise a four wheel rotation. Uh, because you got one wheel that's sitting on the back of the truck not being used you don't want uh, a large diametrical difference between your your wheels on either side of the axle uh, it's not good for the diff so I'd recommend maybe every six or seven or eight thousand miles um, yeah it's an easy job uh, it's something you can do in your driveway uh, it doesn't take a lot of skill uh, much tools. So like I mentioned, uh, rotating all five tires instead of four, you're going to get approximately 20% more life out of your tires. Uh, you're not going to have an unused spare sitting on your tailgate rotting away. Um, also remember to check the tire pressure of the spare that you put in the service. Uh, it's not likely going to be the same as the tires that were previously used. Um, also, whether clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter which way you rotate, but subsequent rotations, you want to keep going in the same direction. Uh, this makes sure that all your tires get a chance to be used in each position of the vehicle. Um, basically, that's it. Uh, pretty simple job. Uh, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you next time. See ya.